my name is Amber LaRock and I am a staff writer with Emergency Vets USA as well as a licensed veterinary technician. Our goal at Emergency Vets USA is to educate you on topics regarding your pet's health. So today we'll be discussing the effects of altitude in dogs and whether or not they experience altitude sickness. If you have ever traveled to a high altitude region, you may have experienced altitude sickness yourself. It's not fun, so it's important to know if our dogs can experience this as well, especially if we plan on traveling with them to these regions. So before we dive into the details, I think it is first important to understand what altitude sickness is in the first place. So altitude sickness is just a result of moving to a higher altitude region, which in turn has lower oxygen levels and reduced air pressure. This can lead to a slew of uncomfortable symptoms, and these symptoms will be exacerbated the faster you move to the higher altitude region. Altitude sickness can be uncomfortable for us and dogs. So altitude sickness can still impact dogs, but it is definitely more rare in dogs than it is in humans. Um, for example, I recently spent some time in Quito, Ecuador, working with an animal rescue there, and after speaking with their veterinarian and learning about the effects of altitude sickness in dogs, I learned that it is fairly rare. It can still happen, um, but when it does happen, it usually only occurs in altitudes 8,000 feet and higher. So usually anything under that, your dog won't experience any impact. But once they reach 8,000 feet and higher, especially if it was a rapid ascension, then they may display some symptoms. If your dog does happen to experience altitude sickness, you may see symptoms ranging from excessive panting, drooling, vomiting, increased heart rate. They may seem like they have a harder time catching their breath. It may appear that um, they have a harder time exerting themselves or they become winded quickly upon exertion. You may see stumbling disorientation, but that's often in more severe cases. And if you do see stumbling or disorientation or even collapse, then it's a medical emergency and they need to see a veterinarian as soon as possible. But usually, if a dog does experience altitude sickness, it'll just be minor symptoms, panting, drooling, maybe a bit of nausea. But again, this is usually just exacerbated if it's rapid ascension. If you move to a high altitude region quickly, then it can impact a dog more, just like it would in humans too. The best way, again, to prevent any complications or altitude sickness in your dogs is like we discussed, just take the transition slowly to the new region that you're traveling to. This can mean not taking a one day trip to a tip top of a mountain to go hiking with your dog. Maybe try to spend some time in the different levels of altitude before you reach the highest altitude that you're going to be spending your time. Um, just like with humans, it's just going to be more comfortable for your dog. It'll be less of an adjustment. Your dog will be more comfortable and you will be more comfortable too. For a more in-depth review on altitude sickness in dogs and whether or not altitude can have long-term effects in dogs, be sure to review the article that is attached to this video, but stay tuned to Emergency Vets USA for more topics on pet health.